Hi guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is week five of my 18 week uh, contest preparation. And yes, I did skip uh, week four. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that and it kind of falls in line with uh, what I wanted to talk uh, about this week. So uh, to give you a rundown of where we are at, nutritionally speaking, um, my macros this week are still at 155 grams of carbohydrate, 160 grams of protein, and 50 grams of fat. And uh, for the last two weeks, I have not made any changes to those numbers uh, for the reason that um, I haven't been able to be consistent with my nutritional intakes. And whether that's been uh, due to traveling or uh, not being able to make it to the gym or uh, circumstances where I just cannot make choices hit my macros without um, in some way having to compromise. Um, when I'm in that kind of situation, it's um, not really wise for me to actually make any adjustments uh, down. So until I can see that I've had a consistent week of training and a consistent week of nutrition, only then can I really tell whether those particular macronutrient intakes, um, are they actually being effective at weight loss? So. Um, this will be week number. Th this will be week number two on these same macros. And uh, what I found was um, that I did have a really consistent week of training this week. So I got in my five weight training sessions, and I also started to bring back in a little bit of cardio. Um, I did a forty-five minute um, hit class on the weekend, and I did a really, 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 really hard session uh, with a couple of girls here in Tasmania. Um, with their coach and it absolutely killed me and I must say I'm never taking 10 weeks off hit cardio ever again because the more time away from that style of training and usually that's my bread and butter uh, the harder it is when you come back um, so yeah I felt like I was gonna throw up uh, <laughs> um, I should tell you what the session was it was actually pretty cool we did um, to start off with eight deadlifts at 90 kilos straight into battle ropes, so 20 fast battle ropes. Um, we then had a sled set up with, I'm going to guess, 60 kilos on it, um, sprint up 20 meters, sprint back 20 meters. Then we had tire flips with the biggest tire that you can get. I'm sure many of you have used tires before, so the biggest of the varieties of tires. Uh, 20 flips, and that's about where my lungs felt like they are about to blow up, uh, and I would really slow down. We then had 10 box jumps um, onto, I think it was a 20, a 30 inch box. Um, then back to the sled, this time it was with the harness, sprint up 20 meters, sprint back 20 meters. And our only recovery time was waiting for the other person to get far enough into their next round uh, for us to then start. So we did four rounds of that and it took uh, just over 30 minutes for us to get through those four rounds. and. I went home to bed <laughs> for the rest of the day. I was like planning to do a, a waist training session on Friday after that. Um, no, no chance. So that was my experience of high intensity cardio after taking quite some time off. So that kind of leads me into the discussion of where I'm heading this week. Um, I put in a really good effort with all my training sessions and I was really consistent with the exception of one day. Um, where my macros were a little bit high, and I only went over really on my protein. Um, I had a really nice steak with my dad uh, at a steak restaurant, and yeah, I was over by about 20 grams of protein. But aside from that, my calorie balance was still really good. Um, I interchange uh, quite a bit between fats and carbohydrates. Um, as the science shows, it doesn't really make any difference um, when, we, when we think about fat loss. Um, as long as uh, your protein and calories are equated for. So some days I might go a little bit higher with fats, but slightly lower uh, in carbohydrates, as long as my overall um, caloric intake and protein needs are met. So uh, I got to Sunday night and I was kind of feeling excited because I haven't had any progress on my weight loss uh, in the last two or three weeks, just with traveling to Kuwait, we've been in Canada, Florida, Australia, a lot of stressful things um, going on right now. And I got up on Monday morning to do this uh, weigh-in and 
I had not changed a damn gram. I was exactly the same as what I was the Monday before. And I was really, really, really disheartened. I was like, wow, I've just put in probably five of my best weight training sessions that I've been able to and just consistency wise for the last four weeks um, because I'm in one location for a change. Actually, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I was in Sydney actually for the first four days and then flew to Tasmania. So yeah, I was just, I wasn't really sure how to make sense of it. So I'm sure many of you have experienced this before where you've been in a phase where you're dieting um, and you get to a point where you're like, wow, I'm doing all this exercise or I'm doing this and this and this uh, X, Y, Z with your nutrition and you don't get any results. Um, there are a couple of very simple uh, reasons for this and it took me a little while to work out which of the reasons it was for me, but um, essentially what I've been able to recognize is that since being in Tasmania, um, I'm just simply not as active um, during the day as what I am in my regular day job. Um, I'm finding that because it's really cold here, I'm freezing all the time, all day, every day. And I don't want to move. Um, I kind of just put the dressing gown on and do my work. I get up to train, get up to eat. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So uh, comparatively, when I'm uh, at home in the US, um, I'm a lot more active during the day. So this is why I wasn't able to achieve any weight loss this week because the calories that I'm taking in are actually equating to the calories that I'm expending through my training or incidental activity. So uh, that was one, um, one reason for my weight perhaps not moving at all this week. The second question, and obviously I'm not going to ask men this, but for females, are you close to your menstrual cycle? Are you one week out? Is it your period? Is it the week coming out of? And for me, I actually have no idea why I haven't got it. <laughs> um, I don't know whether it's to do with stress um, or, I don't know, maybe my body fat's coming down and I don't see it. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's the case. Uh, I have a feeling it's just stress. Uh, but I didn't get my period this month. So I kind of felt like I was meant to be getting it, but... Um, so the symptoms were there, I was kind of like bloated and felt really lethargic. Um, so that's another really common uh, way for us to kind of be fluked into thinking that we haven't um, made any progress when you can actually gain up to a kilo. I've had some women gain up to two and a half kilos uh, of the week of their uh, menstrual cycle. So um, girls, please keep this in mind if you are um, preparing for contest or dieting phase that will certainly impact uh, your ability to lose weight um, through fluid retention. So, uh, usually I like to start uh, macronutrient targets at the beginning of the week um, and then they stay the same throughout the week. I'm actually going to give myself three more days uh, on these intakes. So it's 160 protein, 155 grams of carbohydrates and 50 fats. Um, I'm not going to make any more changes to my um, training regime. I just want to stick to exactly what I have been doing or meant to have been doing. Obviously, I have been really inconsistent. So by Wednesday, if I haven't lost my set 600 to 700 grams, remembering uh, in week one, if you haven't watched this, I discuss uh, what rate of loss uh, should be. So essentially, it's taking your starting weight um, to what your finishing weight should be. How many weeks are you going to be achieving that weight, weight loss? And then you divide up that weight. So for me, when I started, it should have been about 700 grams per week. Um, so if I get to Wednesday and I haven't seen any change, then I'm going to actually make some adjustments to my macros. Um, they're pretty easy targets for me to hit at the minute. Um, so I don't feel it necessary to increase my training volume. If anything, that would just make me more stressed knowing that I've got to go to the gym more than I already am. Uh, so I'm actually going to make some um, adjustments by reducing my nutrition. So um, it needs to be an obvious reduction. It can't just be kind of minor, otherwise your body is not going to notice the change. So uh, on Wednesday, if I have not um, made any changes to my weight, uh, I'm going to be pulling down my carbohydrates by about 15 grams um, per day 
and I'll probably adjust my fats by somewhere between three to five grams per day. My protein will remain the same almost throughout the entire contest prep. Um, and I'll explain that in uh, preceding weeks as to why we do that. Um, so that's Wednesday. So essentially what that will say is that uh, at the moment I'm not in a caloric uh, deficit. I am at maintenance calories. So right now my maintenance calories are 160, 155, and 55. Um, and your maintenance calories, calories will uh, change throughout your, your life. You might do one contest prep one year, uh, and then you do a reverse and your ma maintenance calories might be here. Um, you might do another contest and they might be down here. Um, they are continuously changing. Um, and this is largely determined uh, where your metabolism is at at that particular time. So uh, I got my calories up quite high in my off season. I have had 12 months off um, from dieting and was focusing on my health during that time. Um, and I was eating some really good numbers, but in fairness, I also was pretty unhappy with how I was looking. But um, the positive to that was I was able to um, increase my nutritional intakes to a point where it's like, okay, I'm feeling really full. I kind of want to stop eating now. Um, but I was seeing some great improvements in my strength. Um, and I was able to eat a lot of food. So that's always a good thing, which is why reverse diets are so great. Um, you can do a reverse diet in any number of ways. You can do it aggressively uh, or you can do it conservatively. Um, I find most women <laughs> like to do it the conservative uh, way because it restricts, um, you kind of set caps on how much body fat or weight you gain each week. Um, so it allows for your metabolism to catch up um, without too much of an increase in your weight. We kind of increase your calories a little bit more allow for your metabolism to catch up. We keep doing this and keep doing this with um, the expectation that we don't gain too much weight, um, but it puts your metabolism in a really great uh, position uh, if you are intending on doing a, a body fat loss uh, program or a diet uh, at a later time, which is exactly why I wanted to work my metabolism up to a almighty high so that when I do come down, uh, I don't have to finish as low as previously. Wrap up our weeks five uh, video log. I could have taken this um, really negatively. In fact, I was a little bit disheartened on Monday when I got on the scales and was like, oh, well, that felt like a waste, but it wasn't. It was learning. Um, I just now know that the intakes that I'm having uh, were not putting me in a deficit. Um, so I needed to change part of that equation. I needed to either up my calorie, uh, up my uh, volume for my training, or take less. So, like I said, three more days. If I don't see any adjustments, those macros are coming down. <laughs> so uh, then next week I should continue to see progress um, and get things back into a good routine. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, I know a lot of competitors and people that are trying to diet and lose weight face uh, that point where they're stuck and they're not seeing any continued progression. Um, so uh, try to employ the information that I've provided with you today to your circumstances. Um, it might just be that you've tried to start your diet um, where your metabolism is already really too low and if you're feeling like you're really heavily having to restrict in order to uh, see any progress or you do you're doing uh, strenuous amounts of training um, or cardio and a lot of volume overall and you're still not getting progress perhaps it is time to do a reverse um, and get your metabolism back in a better better place because I see it time and time again and a lot of clients and people that I'm working with um, their numbers are ridiculously low um, I'm talking like 60 grams of carbohydrates and 30 grams of fats and 120 grams of protein. They're not losing weight and they're training their asses off and it's just their metabolism. There is no magic pill. There's no, uh, unfortunately, nothing they've done wrong. Um, perhaps they just didn't realize. So uh, if your macros are already that low um, and you feel like you're really restrictive um, to get any progress, uh, definitely consider a reverse diet to help uh, with your metabolism and don't let stagnant uh, a stagnance in your weight loss uh, dishearten you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's Holly T. Baxter. If you have any nutrition questions or anything like that, um, you're more than welcome to contact me. My website, it is www.hbnutrition.com.au. 
Uh, I have a couple of nutrition articles on there that you may find beneficial if you like this style of uh, education and you want to learn more. Uh, I have an online meal plan generator which generates meal plans for uh, all fitness goals, whether it is uh, muscle gain, fat loss, perhaps you're in maintenance, do you want a reverse diet. Um, I have meal plans uh, suitable for men and women of all ages, so please have a look and see if they can help you. And I also offer uh, weekly flexible dieting coaching um, and for various durations and with without training programs and with without nutrition plans. So um, do check that out and I uh, hope you have a really great day. See you guys.